Hello, my Cancers. How are you doing? Welcome to Deep Soul Tarot. My name is Kelly. For those who are new, welcome to my channel. And for those who are part of the tribe, thank you so much for returning. I appreciate all of you tuning in. Um, I'm a little distracted because I started your video and an alarm went off on my phone. I'm not sure why it says I have an appointment today. But with this whole coronavirus thing, I'm not sure what appointments I have and which ones I don't because they've been canceled and they're now phone appointments and yada, yada, yada. So I really hope during this video there are no interruptions or phone calls. Anyways, um, we're going to do your love reading today, Cancer, um, for April 15th through the 30th, 2020, and moving forward. It is for April Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Mercury, Jupiter, and Mars. Particularly your Sun, your Venus, and your Moon, though. Venus is about love. Moon is about emotions. Okay? For those of you who don't know, this is Remy. Remy is here to remind you to subscribe. And join the tribe. And Remy, hit the bell icon button for notifications. Woohoo! <laughs> oh, good job, Remy. <laughs> He's such a good assistant. You know, he doesn't. He does his. He doesn't ask for a whole lot. Pretty low maintenance. I kind of like it. Anyways, keep in mind that this is a general reading, so it may not resonate with all of you. So take it resonates, leave it doesn't. And also, time is an illusion. And energy is fluid. Some of this may have already happened to you. Some of this may happen as I'm doing the reading. When you view this, maybe this is going to happen down the line. Um, and even if you happen to watch this past April 2020, these videos are timeless. So, uh, oh, excuse me. I hit dismiss. I'm hoping it doesn't it, turn, it doesn't uh, ring again during your video. I turned it off. Oh, wrong phone. Oh. Wait, what's today? Today's Wednesday, right? <laughs> okay. Let me refocus. Anyways, if you happen to watch this past April 2020, it's okay. Whenever you see it and click on it is most likely when you are guided to watch it. And whenever, um, and if it resonates for you, that is the time for that message for you. Okay, let's get going because I... My mind is a little uh, jelloed from too many distractions, too many things going on. I don't do well with all that. You know, see, I like this whole lockdown thing because it's nice and quiet. I like being by myself. I'm sure a lot of you cancers may be the same way. We can be social beings sometimes, but our alone time is very... I'm a cancer, by the way. Cancer Cusp of Leo. So if any of you are cancers, I mean, any of you are cancers, any of you are cuspers, um, my birthday is July 21st. When's yours? Maybe you can find your twin deep. Are any of you my twinsies? July 21st? So I'm kind of Cancer-ish and Leo-ish. So I have, um, I'm a little bit different than most Cancers. Um, <laughs> just saying. But, um, like my Venus is in Leo. My Mercury's in Leo and I'm on Leo cusp. So I'm kind of more like a Leo-ish. But I am a Cancer. You know? Um, I can be crabby. <laughs> I do have an heart, I do have a hard outer shell. For sure. Um, Anyways, uh, so just, I'll shuffle a few more times here. Um, these are not gender specific, so if I refer to, car, to the cards as he or she, that means masculine or feminine energy only in the cards and the reading, not your gender per se. So uh, we all have masculine and feminine energies within us. Okay? So um, you, you usually resonate with one more than the other. We all usually do. Uh, but your gender doesn't matter. You could be a male and resonate more with feminine energy. Um... You know, so keep that in mind. And these, I always put this in here, just in case people wonder, these are not just for heterosexual relationships or connections. You can be in a same-sex connection too, okay? Love is love, and your connection is your connection. Again, take it as it resonates. And, you know, don't make it resonate to you. Don't force it to resonate to your situation. But if it does resonate, you can apply it to where it matches in your life, where it resonates, okay? All right, let's get going. I'm going to do one more. That was a crappy shuffle, so one more shuffle. I love these cards, but they're kind of hard for me to shuffle sometimes. Are you ready, Cancers? Are we ready? All right. Hope you're all do. If you're watching during the pandemic, I hope you're doing okay. You know, speaking of time being an illusion, I have no idea half the time what day it is or the date. Whatever. It's just kind of crazy. And if that alarm goes off again, I'm sorry. Because I hit dismiss, but I don't know. It just it disappeared by itself. So, Knight of Pentacles. All right. Taking something slow. Taking something slow or wanting to take it slow. 
Slow and steady wins the race. Um, Ace of Cups. Hmm. Taking it slow. Dealing with your own self-love right now, Cancers. Good, 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 good. Um, but I am hearing a new beginning in love. Taking it slow with somebody. But slowly moving towards a new beginning in love. Nice. And there's the Ace of Cups card there. Shiny brand new love. For yourself and for your person. Hmm. What are we going, going on here, though? We have the Five of Cups. Hmm. And the Seven of Swords. Okay, what I'm kind of hearing with that, that came to me first. The Seven of Swords. Okay, the Five of Cups is about boredom and stagnation. The Seven of Swords is about deceit. Dishonesty, deceit, but I'm hearing deceit. And what I'm hearing here, Cancer, it's almost as if you're unsure about a person. With the Five of Cups, the person is focusing on more of the spilled cups and is a foot in this, this last cup. So it's almost like Again, just very apathetic about it and just, um, what I'm hearing here, Cancer, is you were hurt in a past love and you maybe have met someone, but you want to take it slow this time because you were very hurt in the last one and you don't want a repeat of that. So you're kind of focusing kind of on the empty cups and the kind of uh, clinging to the past emotions or the emotions of the hurt from that past love but you have a full cup here so try not to focus on the negative and try not to focus on um, I mean if you have some some negative emotions you know go ahead and deal with them cry let them out but it's almost like by focusing on this, you're ruining a potentially good possibility with somebody new in the future or someone you've met. And that's what I'm hearing, the, the being taking it slow. You want it to, you're taking it slow, and um, it's like you're protecting your heart. This is a self-love. You're, you're protecting your heart right now, which is fine. But don't deceive yourself so much in thinking that everyone's going to do, everybody's going to be like the other person. Everybody's different. So taking your time... And thinking about it is one thing. Being a little cautious. Okay, no problem. But if you get too... And you know, we're cancers. Cancers, we're very emotional beings. We're very sensitive. We can be very bogged down by emotions. They can, we can almost drown in emotions sometimes. But sometimes we're overly sensitive. If we're going to be honest, we're overly sensitive. Um, we're hurt very easily, usually. We do have a hard outer shell yes we're tough but we're softies on the inside you know so you may not be showing this to the other person to anyone that you're hurt but yeah you've got a lot of pentacles here the page of pentacles i'm really hearing that you want to get to know this person better before you make any type of decision This picture is interesting to me because it's like they're balancing everything on their own. Um, it's almost as if they're sitting on something, but they're not. I think they're just one leg on top of the other. Interesting. Um, I'm, I'm hearing that you, you learned a harsh lesson with your last relationship, and now you're just taking the time... Uh, doing your homework with this person and making sure that you're, you're being very, very protective of yourself. That's what I'm hearing here. Very protective of yourself. It's like, yeah, I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. I'm not sure quite what I want to do yet. And I'm in no hurry. I'm sorry. I have a jagged nail and I'm trying to get rid of it. It's driving me crazy. I can't stand long nails as it is. I'm one of those females that doesn't like long nails. 
King of Pentacles. You have a lot of Pentacles here. Ooh, boy. You have a lot. Let's see, we have court, a lot of court cards here, too. Let's see if we can have any. So, the um, Ace of Cups. Knight, yeah, there's a Knight of Pentacles. You could be dealing with an Earth sign because you have three Pentacles here. The, the Page, the Knight, and the King. We do not have the Queen yet, but we'll see. Um, so, you could be dealing with an Earth sign, which could be a Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn. You have other elements here. So you have pentacles here. The king of pentacles knows exactly what he wants. But is very patient and analytical in getting it. That's funny because I'm hearing that you're content to be at home with your pet. Whether you have a dog. Yeah, maybe you have a dog because it's a dog in the picture, but uh, you know what? And of course, we're, if you're watching this during the lockdown, which is when I'm recording this, we are um, we are in a, a period of uh, you know being by ourselves a lot, and I'm thinking this is giving you a huge opportunity to think about this connection, or even if you haven't met somebody, thinking about. Um, if I do meet somebody, do I really want to get into another relationship right now? Because over here, you have the Queen of Swords. And Seven of Wands is being resistant, setting boundaries. Oh my goodness, and the Ten of Cups here. Yeah, you're setting some boundaries uh, or being resistant to a love situation. It's like maybe you've cut the person off. Because the Queen of Swords is a very, very harsh energy. She's, um, I call her the Ice Queen. Uh, so maybe right now you are just ignoring the person completely and have cut them out. You're just not interested in delving into any type of love connection right now. Excuse me just a minute. I need a drink. Oh, that's much better. Okay, sorry. A little warm today. I'm in California. A little warm today here. Oh, boy. Yeah. Cancer. Three of swords. Somebody has broken your heart. You're not healed yet. You're not healed from that yet. Um, you're still in agony. That was a very hurtful situation for you. Somebody is almost like they duped you. They played you for a fool, so to speak. Um, yeah. And you're thinking, do I really really want to. Seven of Pentacles is kind of like a thinking and wondering card. Do I really want to invest in another relationship right now? Will it be worth my while to really plant the seeds and get involved with this one? Will we be able to to um, have a solid relationship? A And again, Pentacles, again, very slow energy. Um... Because with the Seven of Pentacles, you're trying to decide if you want to plant the seeds and 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 grow roots and you know put it's some strong roots with this person. You want someone who's going to be in for the long haul. You want someone who's going to be solid, devoted to you and the relationship. And you don't want to have to go through that whole process of dating people and getting into a relationship only to be hurt again over and over and over and over. And I'm thinking right now you're just being extra cautious. And yes, we are in lockdown. So this does give you the opportunity to stay away from your person. But I'm thinking, I'm hearing that you've basically cut off any communication with them completely. You know, maybe you have a communication and you're just not talking to them. Wow, the tower. Something's really happened to you. Something just tore your world apart. Devastated your world. It, it struck you. I mean, it burned. It struck you like lightning and it really it just destroyed your whole world. You really cared about this person. And something has happened that... Um, that really hurt you. Let's see what the tower is. There's your Queen of Pentacles. There it is. Again, it could be an earth sign. Very feminine energy. Masculine energy up here. You know, you have both the King and Queen of Pentacles. I'm thinking that... Um, you thought this person was your soulmate. I mean, you, there are the both cards are here, which usually indicates a connection that does 
imply that you will meet or are, have met your divine counterpart, whether that's a twin flame connection, a soulmate. This is a very interesting reading. The Queen of Pentacles is a very um, a, a nurturing energy, a loyal, and which cancers are very loyal, um, but patient. I'm very much hearing. You are in a hurry to get into another connection, another relationship right now. I was trying to remember what the last reading was for cancer, and I don't remember. I'm a cancer, and I don't remember. Um, I do not remember what the reading was about. I'd have to go back and look at that. But um, So your headspace, I mean, this is heart space too, but this, I see this more as a headspace, heart space. Um, but with the two together, there's just, there's a lot of pentacles. And with pentacles, there's a slow-moving energy. You are in no hurry to jump into a new, maybe you've met someone, you know, and you've had some sort of connection and maybe this is your soulmate, you know, maybe you feel the connection, but you're just not ready to get into anything, um, serious right now. You're not really interested in, you know, it's funny because I'll just touch on this very quickly. <clears throat> uh, I was involved with somebody, um, an Aries. And that didn't work out. And I was devastated. I was devastated. I mean, big time. Two weeks, I did absolutely nothing. I pretty much stayed in bed. I didn't do anything. And I don't usually get, I do not usually get like that. I don't get that invested in people. And we had known each other for a long time, off and on, off and on. Didn't, never lived in the same area as me. And this time, we lived uh, pretty far away. And it was kind of like, it was like nine or ten months of talking with, to each other and planning and whatever. Like, we were going to get back together. And I thought, this is it. This is the person I'm meant to be with. And then he went out with somebody else, and they hit it off. I knew, just online, we weren't even talking. We were online, Messenger. I knew something was weird. And he finally fessed up and said, you know, don't be mad, but I hit it off with so-and-so, and I've been seeing her now, and blah, blah, blah. Well, I was devastated. I, I told him we have been friends for a long time. I told him it was a hard pill to swallow, but I would have to, I needed time to get over that. I, you know, I didn't want to ruin the friendship over that so I mean it was hard but I you know so at that point I was not look I, that was it I'm like that's it that's you know that was I took a chance and I it was a, not a good thing for me so like I said it's been two weeks and I I finally decided I'm very much in the music scene here I had different bands but different friends that were different bands that were doing a show here and where I'm at and I decided that I was going to go, but I do everything all by myself. I was going to go by myself to, which is no problem. I'm used to it. Um, I kind of prefer it that way, really. Um, depending on who it is, but I just, you know, you know, people aren't into music as much as I am. So I, I can come and go as I please and do what I want. I like that. Um, so I went and saw the first two bands and whilst sitting where I was sitting with some strangers, but we started chatting and through the whole night they were like going out smoking and I would say their seats and, and whatever. And, um, this person kept walking by and walking by and I don't know why this person caught my eye because I was not looking. I did not want to be involved with anybody. I was not looking for anybody. I was just there to see the bands and, and be, have a good time and, you know, get my mind off of things. And, um, we just kind of locked eyes. He went by and we just looked at each other and it was like we had known each other. It was really, really surreal. And then he disappeared. And then, um, I was like, well, okay, there he goes. There he goes. I don't know where he went, but there he goes. Um, and turns out, I'll, I'll shorten the story. I couldn't see while the band was playing, but it turns out, and it's funny because I'm, I played the drums. I love the, absolutely love the drums. The last boyfriend was a drummer. This person ended up being a drummer. I went, oh my God. <laughs> But, uh, I mean, he was excellent though. I didn't know it was him. So I went in the back. I never do this. I finally asked the people I sat with, would you hold my seat now? I said, I never do this, but I have got to tell this person how good they are. I mean, he was freaking awesome. And I went in the back to the side of the stage and it was dark. I couldn't see him on the stage because it was dark and he had his head down when he was playing. And 
I uh, went in the back. I still couldn't see. And I said, excuse me, are you the drummer? And he says, yes, I am. And I said, I just wanted to tell you how freaking good you are. And he said, well, thank you. And then he came down, introduced himself. We started talking. It was him. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. It's the guy that we had been walking by and we got locked eyes. And it's kind of like we would glance at each other, but we never really spoke. So then we finally met. And at that point, it, you could tell there was something between us. I thought he was cute. He, um, he was a sweetheart. He was an absolute sweetheart. I never thought I'd see him again, though. And, I, again, I wasn't interested in being in a relationship. So in the beginning, um, I, I liked their band. I really liked the band, so I went to go see the band. And then there was one more band after them that I was friends with, so I hung out and watched that band. But, you know, I went home. That was the end of it. He, I mean, he doesn't play in this area, so it's out of the area. But uh, he had told me, oh, we have more shows coming up, blah, blah, blah. Um, well, anyway, so we, we there was a connection there. And, yeah, so I started hanging out with him and got to know the rest of the band and whatever. Started hanging out. But I still, in the back of my mind, I was thinking, how do I know? He's in a band. He's a drummer. He could be a player. You know, I'm just going to hang out with him. We can just have some fun. And that's, that's as far as it's going to go. Well, the more I hung out with him, the more I really, really started to care for him. And it was not my plan. And he's a lot younger than me. Um, and I know now, in retrospect, I was never really into this particular thing. But I realized he is my twin flame. I know he is. We're not, in, we're not in contact right now. Not really. We're still on good terms. We're friends. Um, we hung out for a good a couple of years. We were together doing things here and there for a couple of years. And then uh, there's a whole different situation going on. I think he was... Anyways, it doesn't matter. But the point of the matter is... The point of all this is, Aries, is that I was... Wait, did I just say Aries? <laughs> Sorry. Cancer. Cancer. My last boyfriend wasn't Aries. I just did the Aries reading, too. Uh, cancer. My whole point in all this cancer is... Um, the, I swear, it's almost when the least you are looking for, the more resistant you are. That's when you meet... Your person. It's almost like I had learned a very valuable, very, very valuable lesson in there. And that person has come back since and tried to connect again. That, that situation didn't work out. It was like, oh, no, no, no. That's done and over with now. And, of course, I was totally into, I almost said his name, totally into my twin. And I still, I love him to death. I have a deep uh, connection with him, and that will never go away. Um, he's a sweetheart. He really is. I wish him only the best. He's in a little situation right now. <laughs> um I hope he had the best of luck with that, but and I really don't want any part of that. I don't mind being friends with him and all, but I just don't want to have to, no. Um, you know, and I would do anything for him. He's a sweetheart, but um, but my point in all this is, with this being hurt, devastated, devastating hurt. I've been there. I've been there. And I was just like, no, I do not want anybody else. I don't want love. But then I ended up meeting my twin. Do you see how that works? So I'm hearing this for you, Cancer, that you're very resistant. You don't want to be involved with anybody. You've been hurt. You're very, you know, focused on myself right now. Um, you know, in, in your back of your mind, you're thinking it would be nice. But you know what? No, I just can't. I can't put myself out there anymore. It's, it's horrible to be hurt like that. And we're very sensitive, you know. And I'm hearing, though, but in time, in time, uh, as you go through healing and as time passes, and it may be a good amount of time. Because there's a lot of pentacles here. Be patient. Because your divine person may be coming. I don't know if it's going to be your twin flame. Could be. Could just be. Could be your soulmate. Could be just a soul connection. But those are all strong connections. And you'll know. When you meet the person, you'll know. But even in time, I, like I said, in retrospect, I realized. Because the connection was just too, too surreal for me. I don't fall for people like that. Usually, I don't give a person a second look. I may talk to somebody. I, I just am not into... The relationshipy thing. I'm very much. I'm kind of relationship phobic, really, and um, so that just the whole thing with my Aries had put a bad taste in my mouth, and I just I was like, I see, I knew it. Stupid, 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 stupid. Why did I even think that was going to work? And then I meet this guy, and I was like, Oh my God, no, 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 no. <laughs> I was very resistant. Let's see what your obstacles and challenges are. Indep there's a lot of independence here. Lot of independence here. Oh, yes. All right. Cancer. This is actually very, very beautiful. Because you have the Nine of Pentacles. All right? Very much about you and independence. Doing, being abundant for yourself. Doing things for yourself. And hence, in doing that, you're doing the healing that you need to do. With the Ace of Cups and the Ace of Pentacles, you are doing the healing that you need to do. Planting your own seeds so you can grow. 
into a better you. Healing from this situation, you are definitely not healed from this. With the, the Three of Swords and the Tower and then the Seven of Pentacles in between, you have a lot of growing to do and to me, a lot of healing. You know, there's a lesson here, but there's still some growth that has to be had. But just focus on yourself and your situation and you right now. And perfectly, perfect, perfect, perfect. And that's going to bring your, your, you're going to plant roots for yourself. This is, the universe offering you a whole new beginning. Basically with the Ace of Pentacles, in my opinion at least, in my, when I read it, is that the universe is offering you a brand new beginning here. And it usually is a point where something hurtful has happened. You've learned a very, maybe hard, but hard, but valuable lesson. And you start to learn things about yourself and heal. So there are parts of you that needed to, so it's a karmic lesson, unfortunately, but it is a karmic lesson. And this is the universe saying, okay, that's done and over with. Now it's time to work on yourself, Cancer. And now we're going to offer you, when this is done, focus on yourself. And we can see that you've done enough work and enough focusing and nurturing yourself. You are then able to, ready to go out and maybe meet your person or whatever, have contact with someone. And it's a new beginning. They're offering you a new beginning. It's a clean slate. Wiping the clay sleen. Did I just say that right? Wiping the clay sleen. Wiping the, the slate clean. Wow. I'm doing dyslexic tarot. Did you notice? <laughs> okay. Wiping the slate clean, Cancer. Wipe the slate clean. Deal with those emotions. Deal with the hurt. You know, like I said, have a good cry. You know, don't deny them. Let them out. Acknowledge them. And then move on, though. Let them pass. And little by little, baby steps... And slow, very slow energy. You will move forward. You will heal. And then you will be ready to meet your divine counterpart. Mm -hmm. See how the universe... The universe is very clever. They all have a journey for us. The, oh my God. This is beautiful. This is basically the outcome or moving forward. You also have the Ace of Swords. You know, right now your mind is almost like in a... Uh, that your thoughts are spiraling out of control or almost like a maze step by step you will heal the heartache step by step you will start to heal yourself and self-nurture yourself step by step you have the ace and we're not done yet you have the ace of, of cups the ace of pentacles and the ace of swords emotions thoughts and um the ace of pentacles is um well stability being down to earth, um, it's a brand new beginning. This is a, it's a brand new beginning for you, Cancer. This is beautiful. It's a transformation, a beautiful transformation. Ten, oh, that's nice. This is really nice. Okay, so you cut that person out of your life. Um, I mean, maybe you haven't met someone yet. Maybe you haven't even met them yet. Maybe that last person hurt you and you cut them out of your life. You don't want to speak to them anymore. You don't want to have any contact with them. Or you just don't. You just you just don't. Um, but even if you did meet somebody, maybe right now is not the time for you to have contact with them. So you've cut them out. Um, but what I'm hearing here, though, is it's all about you and a new beginning. It's like self-love. Self-understanding, um, balancing and stabilizing yourself so that when you do go out and meet somebody, your divine counterpart, whoever that may be, then you can choose which path you want to take. You may choose to stay single. You may choose not to get involved right away. That's fine. Um, you may come in contact with your person, meet them, or come uh, reunite with that person. Not the, not the person that hurt you, but the new person. You may uh, meet up with that person again and say, okay, I'm now, I'm in a better place now. You know, this, not that you're verbalizing, but in your mind, you're saying to yourself, okay, I'm in a better place now. So maybe I will give this person a chance and we can see where it goes. It's, you're making, you're making a, um, a good choice though. A good choice. Time alone. Wow. You have three aces. And we're going to get some messages from the universe. We'll see what, what comes out there, Cancer. But um, Yeah, self-love is leading to 
It's like it's destiny. Let's see what the spirit. What spirit? What do you have for my cancers? Hold on. I'm not going to take those because I almost dropped the deck. I don't think those were meant to come out. When I I hit the deck and some cards fell. I want something to be specific. I don't want it to be my fumbling. So it's a false because that was the card that was at the bottom of the deck. So I hadn't really shuffled a whole lot yet. There we go. I did see the page of pentacles. Oh, there's two cards on the bottom. Okay, we'll go with these. These kind of came, they were down on the floor upside down. So first, okay, the first is the ten of wands. You're carrying a burden. You're still carrying the burden of that past relationship. So regardless if you've met somebody yet or not, you need to put down this burden, get rid of any excess emotional baggage, mental baggage, baggage within the soul. It's kind of like a spring cleaning. Take the time to clean out your heart, your soul, and your mind. But the good thing about the Ten of Wands, Cancer, is the burden is about to be lifted. Now, that's the next card. You do not have the Ace of Wands yet. So, I think you're still in the process. All right? So, Spirit is trying to tell you to get grounded. Really do some soul searching and work through your thoughts and your emotions. And it's a whole new beginning. This is, this is Spirit offering you a brand new beginning. And that's the only one you don't have yet is the Ace of Wands wants but that's coming that's not coming yet because after that is the ace of wands is very much about having an idea of putting it into action you're not ready to put it into action yet you know you may think that okay well even if i do meet somebody i want to date i just i don't feel like i'm ready to do that yet hence the reason why the ace of wands isn't here yet you still haven't put down the baggage yet you're not ready for that yet and that's fine this is a good time during a pandemic or even if it's past it and you're spending time alone to work through all this stuff. So when you do emerge and you meet somebody, you're ready. You're in a good place to decide if you want to be in a relationship or not at that time. You know? And who knows? That may be your person. Even if you delay it. If that's your person and it's destined to happen, you'll end up together anyways. You can just take your time and just spend some time as friends. See how that works? Alright, you have the Justice card in reverse. The Justice card um, upright is about balance and truth. You know, um, and right now you're out of balance. So that's, I think, why it's in the reverse. You need to do, do some soul searching and be honest with yourself and really work through um, the baggage that you're carrying. And with the high priestess, who is an all-knowing being, uh, mysterious, yes, but an all-knowing being who, who is all-powerful, all-knowing, and uh, but she, she's a very mysterious person. She will only reveal to you what she wants you to know when she thinks you're ready for it. Um, it's also about intuition. So the high priestess is in, is in reverse. So I think you may need to tap into, uh, do some soul searching, tap into your intuition. Water signs, but cancers in particular are very intuitional. But I'm thinking that you um, are in a place where the high priestess is saying, it's not time yet for you. It's just not time yet for you. I will reveal to you when the time is ready, when it's time for you to emerge and move forward, but it's not time. You're still having sleepless nights, nightmares, insomnia, stress, and we need to get rid of all that. And um, you may want to move forward and get past this hurt, Cancer, the Knight of Swords, but the Knight of Swords is very much moving too fast, too quickly, too fast. No matter what the cost, I just want to get past, I don't want to have to deal with this. It hurts too much, I just don't want to think about it. Well, you can do that. We all have free will. You can do that. But that's not going to teach you your lesson. And you're, not going to, you're going to be carrying those emotions with you. And you may end up meeting somebody who's not your match because you're carrying around that excess emotional baggage or those thoughts. Does that make sense, Cancer? So let's get you... Oh, here we go. You got the owl. And what's the owl all about? Wisdom. Seek out deeper knowledge to see through deception. Um... I'm seeing seek out deeper knowledge within yourself, Cancer, to see through any deception. The more knowledgeable you are about yourself, your feelings, and being willing to be honest with yourself and deal with that stuff, the better you are. You know, the, the owls have, I believe it's them, they have the keen sight. And the more knowledge you have about yourself and the more 
you know what you want, the easier it, it might be for you to have that radar to know who may be uh, schmoozing you, deceiving you. And you'll be able to see through that. So the next person you meet, you'll be in a better place. You will be able to see. Um, you'll be able to see through that. I think um, you will attract somebody who's more um, your match when you do the self-work. You have the tortoise on the bottom of the deck. When changes are made for the sake of change itself, resist. All right. So what I'm hearing with that, Cancer, is you may be trying to say, okay, I've had this heartache. That's enough. I don't want to deal with it anymore. We're going to put that aside, and I'm just going to focus on this or this and this. Mm, wait, hold on. Yeah, you may be changing that behavior, but are you really learning the lesson? Are you really dealing with the emotions? Are you really thinking about it? Changing your thought process and dealing with those, those hurt feelings and the negative emotions? So it's a kind of a self-check thing here. You got healing chaos and miracles. Oh my God. I ate something and I'm, I'm ripping it up and it's not doing well. Oh, I don't think I took my, my morning pill. Acid reflux. That's why. All right. Healing chaos. You need to heal the chaos. You've got a tornado still brewing inside. It's still, you're like in the eye of the storm. It's like you're in the eye of the storm. And, um, miracles. Let me just say two things here, Cancer. You can't sit at home and hope it'll all go away and then at some point a miracle will happen and you will meet your true love without putting any effort into it. Um, but what I am also hearing, that by healing the chaos, if you spend the time to heal the chaos, because I think you're still in it, you're still in that storm, it's not time for you to meet your person yet. Miraculously, the world works in mysterious ways. And so does the high priestess, mirror of the mystery, that if you spend time at home with yourself and work through these emotions, and then whenever the pandemic rises, or at some point, whenever it is, you could even be past that, even well past that, you're finally going to emerge and say, all right, I'm just going to go about my business. Miraculously, that's when the universe will step in and say, well, guess what? Cancer's done their work. They're not focusing so much on finding the love. They're just doing it, going about their business, which is, is what you're supposed to do. And there are miracles that are going to be happening for you in the future. Beautiful, beautiful rainbows. They're just barely peeking out behind the stone, stone, there, yeah, stones in the clouds. With every storm, when it rains, there's a rainbow. Okay? You're going through the storms right now, Cancer. But eventually your rainbow will come out. The sun will come out. And you will be thriving. You'll be high above the clouds. Seeing above, it's like you're going to be so extended. You're going to be high above. Um, I'm here higher than a kite, even though there's no kite here. Higher than a kite. Standing tall. Thriving. Let's get you an Oracle of the Fairy card, shall we? See what else we have here. What does that say? Flourish. The Lotus Flower Fairy tells you. To learn from experience and shed your inner light on any unclear areas of your life or those of others. Anything unclear. Okay? Shine from within is on the bottom of the deck. Looks are only skin deep. True beauty shines from within. And it's time for you to shine. This is a time for self-acceptance and for renewing your total, your true beauty. And underneath that is solitude. By spending some time alone. Rediscover the true beauty within you, Cancer. You're, you're maybe in a very dark place right now and hurt. And so when you're hurt, you can't see things clearly. But in, in time, take your time. Take your time and nurture yourself. And by doing that, you will slowly but surely learn the lessons you need to learn. Learn about yourself. And then you're going to heal that chaos. Miracles can happen. You're going to be surprised. You're going to thrive and shine from within. But the tortoise, you know the tortoise in the hair story, slow and steady wins the race? Take your time. Take your time. Take your time, and these slow, steady steps will, will eventually lead you to your divine counterpart. Your divine person. Cancer, that's what I have for you. 
I hope that helped you in some way. And if it did, I do ask you again to please smash that like button. Give me a thumbs up. Um, feedback. I love the feedback. It lets me know that you like the love ratings. Or it lets me know that it did resonate. And I don't know if I said in the beginning of your video, I did say it in Aries, that I do pay attention to the views, the likes, and the comments. Because then when it comes time for me to do my next, next round of, of love readings, which will be the beginning of May, um, as my own little logistics and analytics, I look to see. I assume that those who are viewing and those who are commenting or liking are the ones that are into the love readings. And those are the ones that I will be doing first. So if you want your love reading to come first, I suggest you just hit that like button. Hit, hit, hit. <laughs> and do subscribe and join the tribe. I, I encourage that because you never know when a reading comes up for you. It may come up on your feed. Hit that bell button for notifications. A, a video may come up on your feed and you just happen to click on it and go, you know what? I have the time I'm going to watch it. And it may be the message for you. You just never know. Um, I mean, it's happened to me many times. Uh, and share. Share with your fellow cancers. Someone who may be dealing with a cancer. If you share it with someone, they may have cancer in their chart. And do check the other placements in your chart. If I didn't say, there's a there's a thing down below that you can click on and get your, um, down in the description box, that you can get your chart. And comment. Let me know if you were born on July 21st. You're my twinsy. Or put your birth, Vince, drop your birthday down there. Maybe you'll find your twinsy. I think it's kind of cool when you find other people born on the same day as you. Maybe not the same year, but the same day. Okay, cancer. I love you very much. Thank you all for tuning in. I uh, love you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you to all my subscribers. Um, I appreciate you very much. And for those of you who aren't subscribed, I do encourage you to, to join the tribe. Um, I'm goofy. I'm different and goofy. I'm a weirdo. Whatever. But I am goofy. Uh, so if you can handle that, then, you know, be part of the tribe. <laughs> my fellow cancers. All right. Thank you so much. Peace out.